Hello everyone, it's Woody from Splice. I have a presentation for you on how to rig up dynamic table views for iOS. So it takes a lot to take a table from something that looks like this in the storyboard editor, that's a table with no content, to something that looks a little bit more dramatic. Something more like this, this or that. So to get us from the left hand side to the right hand side, there's a couple steps that we need to do in order to provide content to a table view. Those will be the topics of this presentation. So we'll do a quick cursory review of the table view structure, the fact that it's made up of sections and rows. We'll take a look at the types of table views. So there's static table views and then there's dynamic table views. Dynamic table views are the focus of this presentation. Then I'll show you how to implement a dynamic table views method. There's two methods that you need to implement and maybe one optional method or perhaps some more if you want to customize the appearance of your table view. So we'll take a look at those essential methods. Then I'll give you a demonstration of setting up the table view. But if you're tuning in at this point, you already have some experience using Objective-C protocols. You've used storyboards before, and it's expected that by now you've already used delegates and delegation. You might have used those in regard to a text field, maybe resigning the keyboard, or perhaps you've watched one of my previous demonstrations on YouTube focusing on delegation with UI picker views. Either way, I expect you have those, so I'm not going to cover those in detail. Now, reviewing table view structure, here we have a UI table view. Now, table views are made up of sections and rows. There's two table views on the screen. One is a plain table view, that's on the left-hand side. And then there's a group table view on the right-hand side. The reason I'm showing both of them is I want to demonstrate that the way that they're structured, with section headers and rows within those sections, they're identical. Even though they might look a little bit different, they will have sections and, and rows within them. So for this particular table view, the selected section is section zero, and it has one row in it, also called row zero. Then the next section is referred to as section one, and its first row is also row zero. And then the next one is section two, and it has rows zero and one. Point being that you have sections which contain rows, and the rows are referred to by an index, which resets the zero every time you start a new section. Table views, in summary, are made up of sections and rows. Now this is the storyboard editor inside of Xcode. I have two table views. On the left-hand side, I have a dynamic table view, and on the right-hand side, I have a static table view. The difference between a dynamic table view and a static table view is that at design time, a dynamic table view has no structure, whereas a static table view does have structure. The static table view has rows and sections whereas the dynamic table view on the left doesn't have any rows or sections, it just has a prototyping area. The fact that one of these table views is showing using a plain style and the other table view is showing using a group style, that's inconsequential, it doesn't really matter. They could both be plain style and it wouldn't change the fact that dynamic table views only get their structure at runtime, while static table views get their structure at design time. So some examples of dynamic table views. Uh, here I have on the left-hand side the music player. So I, I don't know, as the author of the music player application, how many songs you have in your music library. So I can't create the sections and the rows in those sections until the application runs and it gets to query your AV assets in your music library. Additionally, the BBC News application. We don't know what the news stories are. We can't tell the future. So there's no way for us to, at design time, lay out the sections and put the stories in. It just doesn't make any sense. Naturally, these two implementations are using dynamic tables. Dynamic tables are data-driven. Depending on the data that you provide them, their structure will change. So there's two protocols that you can implement to provide content to a table view. That's the data source protocol. And then secondly, to configure the display of the table view. That's the table view's delegate. If nothing else, you have to implement the table views data source methods. There's two of them that are required. When I think about table views, I sometimes think about the structure of a skyscraper. The data source of a table view is setting up the structure of the table view in regard to sections and rows, just like a skyscraper is made up of floors, which can then be subdivided. Then the delegate comes after the fact and skins it, makes it look different, makes it look unique, makes it uh, conform to the visual appearance of the app's designer's wishes. A UI table view has an outlet to its data source. And one of the methods that you may implement from the data source is number of sections in table view, colon. 
Now that's an optional method. By default, it's going to well, default to 1. However, if you were making the music application, as in the screenshot on the screen at the moment, you'd want to implement this method and return 26. That's one for every letter that's there. In fact, you might add an extra one for the search field. You might add another section for numbers at the bottom. So really, in that case, you could return 28 sections. But if you don't implement it, it's going to default to one. Once you've identified to the table view the number of sections, it's going to call once per section the method table view colon number of rows in section colon. So for this particular section, which is section 16, it's going to ask you how many rows are in section 16. You then go back to whatever your backing data source is, could be, could be anything really, and you'd find out that, hey, there's, there's four songs. So from that method, you'd return four. And then it's going to repeat the same method, but it's going to change the argument uh, from section 16 to section 17 for the R's. And in there, you're going to go back and find that, well, there's 14 songs that all start with R. So you'd return 14. And in this way, the table view learns its structure. It doesn't know at this point what is in row 4. It doesn't know what's in row 3 or row 2 or 1 of section 16. But it does know that there's four rows. And that's sufficient for its structure to be laid out, which is the purpose of implementing the methods number of sections in table view and table view colon number of rows in section colon. Above and beyond that, you actually have to provide the content for the cell. Now what the table view will do is it'll calculate the number of cells that can appear on the screen at any given time. So for the current screenshot, there are seven rows on the screen and two section headers. And the table view will call back to its data source asking for the cell that's to be displayed for a particular row in a particular section. So in this case, the table view is going to call back with table view colon cell for row at index path. The index path contains the section and the row integers. And you'll use that to go grab a cell and populate that cell with the content that it's supposed to display. In this case, the name of the song. By doing this, you can extensively customize the appearance of UI table view as shown in these screenshots. In review, UI table view data source has three methods, two of which you must implement, and one is optional. Those methods are number of sections in table view, by default it's one, and then you must implement table view colon, number of rows in section colon, specifying the, well, the number of rows per section, and that's going to be called once per number of sections. And then, depending on what cells are appearing on the screen and where your table view has been scrolled to, you your table view is going to ask its data source on demand for table view colon cell for row index path colon. And inside there, you'll grab a cell, populate the cell with contents, and give it back to the table view. Optionally, you can implement UI table view delegate. UI table view delegate contains methods for customizing the display, um, the availability of editing modes, and the availability of selecting cells. Let's take a look at a demonstration of how to implement a dynamic UI table view. This is a demonstration app application for creating a table view. So I'm using a generic single view controller, view controller. There it is. It's set to dynamic, which means it's going to be calling its delegate methods at runtime. There's dynamic. If I run it right now with command R, it's going to launch into the iOS simulator and there's no content inside of my table view. The content that I'd like to show on my table view is located in this JSON file. This JSON file contains information about some courses for a training company, actually for Splice. So my app is going to take this content and use it to back the table view. I also have some icons stored over here and it'll show those icons too. When you implement support for a table view, the table view has to know that it's going to go back to the view controller and treat its underlying view controller as the data source. So for this particular table view, I'm going to take the data source outlet and connect it to the view controller proxy there. I could do the same thing for the delegate, but I know I'm not implementing any delegate method, so for now I'm going to leave it off. Now if I run the application, Command-R, 
it crashes because the table view has been told that it has a data source and it went to that data source and it sent it the message table view number of rows in section and I haven't implemented that yet so it crashed which is understandable in my view controllers class extension I have a property called courses which is an NS array and it automatically loads the courses from the JSON file it doesn't really matter what you're using to back your table view I'm using an array you could use also an array you could use a set you could use a string that you subdivide that you chop up yourself you could use a random number generator it doesn't really matter what you're using as the backing content for your, for your table view provided that when the delegate methods get called you can figure out the number of sections you can figure out the number of rows and you can figure out what content to put in for a given row for a given section other than that doesn't really matter it's up to you table view doesn't care table views like like the uh, the honey badger table view don't give a damn there's three things that you need to do when you're implementing support for delegation I call them I call these the three eyes of delegation step number one you need to indicate your intent to conform to the protocol then you have to implement some methods and finally you need to introduce the object that needs the delegate to its delegate and that also counts for data sources Now, this is what we already did we already introduced it by dragging the connection over from the storyboard editor so this part's done we'll put a little check mark beside it all done indicate our intent well that simply means we use angle brackets and put in the name of the protocol by the interface so that's so that's UI table view data source and that part's done finally we need to implement the methods now I told you that there's three methods one of which is optional in the data source so we're gonna go ahead and put in the two methods that we have to put in let's maybe add it down here the first one is and I'm just putting a hyphen in typing the word table view and it auto completes table view number of rows and section and that's going to be equal to the number of things in the array that's backing it for me. So the array is the, it's an array of dictionaries which represent all the courses. So if I did return self courses dot count, well, that's the number of rows. Finally, we have to implement self row at index path, which is the method that gets called when the table view needs to display a new row. Those rows are called cells. So table view. self row at index path. Now your first step is to, to get a cell from the table view. And the cells have identifiers that are accessible uh, over here in the storyboard editor. So this is a cell and its identifier is actually just cell. So what I'm going to do is make a static string with the word cell in it so that I can not have to allocate it every time this method gets called. That's just a little performance enhancement. Static and a string. If you're not sure about statics, uh, you need to go read up a little bit on C. But suffice it to say, by making this static, next time this method runs, if it's already been created, this variable is not recreated. And that's going to be cell identifier gets cell, because that's how it was written exactly over here. So good. Next, we have a, a method we can use that will always go get us. A cell and that method is this uh, it's going to return a UI table view cell I'll call it cell gets table view DQ reusable cell with identifier for index path that's the methods name the identifier is the one I just made so cell identifier and the index path is the one that's passed as the argument so index path the great thing about that method is it's always going to give us a cell that's ready for populating so if I did something like cell dot text label dot text, I just said this is a sample, and then I returned it, and I run the app, that's command R. Then I have for every one of my courses, I just have the text cell. Now this backing array for me is an array of courses, and those courses are dictionaries. 
So I have an argument called an index path. The index path contains the row that the table view is interested in, and it also contains the section that the table view is interested in. Now we only have one section in this table view, so I'm just going to go read the row. The row is index path dot row. I'm going to go to the array and get the dictionary of interest. That's NS dictionary dict gets self dot courses row. And then from that dictionary, I'm going to read in the strings that I need to set the text label and detail label. So there's my text label. There's my detail label. I just need to revise the name of this to current course. Comment out this one or delete it. And now when I run it, I have all the course names. The table view is on its way. Uh, the final thing I need to do is this method, which retrieves the image. Now it doesn't really matter how you retrieve your images, it doesn't really matter how you get your text, as long as in the self road index path, once you know what row it's interested in, you have a way to correlate that back to your data and uh, you go retrieve the content that you need. And there are my cells. That is implementing support for a dynamic UI table view. So we covered the table view structure that a table view is made up of sections and rows. We took a look at the two types of table views, static and dynamic, and learned that the difference between them is how they appear in the storyboard editor concerning their structure at design time. A dynamic table view doesn't know its structure at design time. It only knows it at runtime because you put methods in that allow it to know its structure. Then we took a look at the specific UI table view data source methods that we needed, table view number of sections in row, and self for row at index path. Please feel free to come take any one of my training courses located at a Splice Training Center across Canada. I'm also available to provide on-site training to yourself and your coworkers to help you get up to speed in iOS programming quickly. And that can be offered anywhere in the world. Thanks.